The House of Squibb, manufacturing chemists to the medical profession since 1858, bring you Academy Award. The pictures, the players, the techniques and skills which have won or been nominated for, the coveted awards granted each year by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences to each in his field for outstanding achievement. The House of Squibb, makers of the great family of Squibb medicinal products, brings you the distinguished stars, Claire Trevor and Randolph Scott in Stagecoach, the production which in the category of Best Picture of the Year was nominated for the 1939 Academy Award. <laughs> Missy's handy, Blackie! Pull! You sons of guns! Pull! Hey. This is the story of a trip by stagecoach in the early days of the West. By stagecoach from Tonto, Arizona to Lordsburg, Arizona. A few miles today by car or train, an epic journey in those frontier days shortly after the Civil War. This is the story of those who drove and those who rode that stagecoach from Tonto to Lordsburg on this day. It is mostly, though, the story of a bad man of the trail and a girl who thought she was too bad to marry him. Come on, you lazy critters. We'll never get to Dry Fork. Back the way you've been croaking, I figure you're plumb scared of Geronimo and his Apaches. Well, of course I'm scared of Geronimo. So are you. And if we didn't have all these soldiers riding with us, I'd go right back to Tondo. I've been thinking about you too, Curly. Me? What for? Well, it's right funny you trailing the Ringo kid. I thought he was in the pen. He was. Busted out? Yep, I heard that he was busting to get to Lordsburg to get even with the plumber boys. But I aim to find the kid and put him back in the pen where he belongs. Hey, ain't that a feller standing along the trail ahead? Huh? Yep, seems to be. Better slow down, Buck. Give me room to swing my gun. Whoa, whoa, girls, whoa. Hey, wonder who he is. I don't remember no puncher being along this way. You're a United States Marshal, Curly. You ought to know him. Hey, pull up careful. He ain't got no horse. He's carrying his saddle in one hand and holding a Winchester in the other. Well, I'm sure glad he ain't Geronimo or, or the Ringo kid, that's all. Give me room, Buck. It is a Ringo kid. Yeah, I'm sure glad it is. What? Hello, kid. Ain't you far from home? You mean prison, don't you, Curly? Well, I didn't expect you to be riding shotgun this trip. Going to Lordsburg? I figured you'd be in Lordsburg by this time. Lame horse. Got any room in the coach, Buck? Well, I reckon so, Ringo. Then you got another passenger. Yeah, darn right we have. I'll take that Winchester, kid. I ain't going to argue about it, Curly. But I just hate to part with a gun like this. I guess you don't understand, Ringo. You're under arrest. Won't do you no good to monkey with that rifle, kid. We got a cavalry escort coming up behind. Well, what do you know? I guess it's all right. Here's the gun, Curly. Uh, thanks. Now, uh, just get in the coach and make yourself to home. All right, come on, Shandy. Hey, get up there. Come on. Come on. Something, Curly? Nope. Oh, excuse me. Well, why don't you say something? A man gets nervous sitting here like a mummy thinking about Indians. You say something. You've been talking all day without making no sense. Well, doggone it. Here's something that makes sense. 
and been peeking down back into the coach, and I seen the Ringo kid making eyes at Dallas, and she's making eyes at him. That's rich. The Ringo kid and Dallas the dance hall gal. <laughs> Some match. He breaks out of jail, and she gets kicked out of town. Oh, my. <laughs> Can I help you down, Miss Dallas? Pretty high step. Oh, there. Thanks. Oh, uh, just a minute. Yes? I, uh, I just wanted to thank you for smiling at me in the coach. Smiling at you? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that, that isn't anything. Yes, it is. To a fellow who's been in jail, it is. Well, I appreciate it, Miss Dallas. You see, the others, except Doc Boone, they were kind of uppish. Not that I blame them. Oh, I guess they don't mean to be. Oh, I guess not, only I... Well, I noticed sort of that they acted kind of that way to you, too. Oh, well, yes, I guess they did. I didn't mean nothing by what I said. If I said something that that offends, I... Well, I'm sorry. I'm not offended. I didn't get a chance to get acquainted with the folks on the stage. You know who they are? Yes, that's Mrs. Mallory standing there. She's on her way to join her husband, Captain Mallory of the Cavalry. You know Doc. Mm-hmm. And the, the man with the white hair and the little traveling bag is Mr. Gatewood, the banker from Tonto. The dark, tall man is Hatfield, the gambler. And the little wheezing man is Mr. Peacock. He's a whiskey salesman. Thanks. I guess that covers everybody. Except you. Me? Yeah, sure. You're such a pretty gal to be traveling alone. Uh, you counting on meeting a husband somewhere along the line? Husband? Why? No, I I hadn't. No, I, I have no husband. Good. I feel better, Dallas. Dallas, mind if I call you that? No. No, I don't mind. Hey, you! Ringo! Come on in here where I can keep an eye on you. Why, sure, Curly. After you, ma'am. What are you folks doing here? Howdy, Maggie. Where's the soldiers was to meet us? Ain't no soldiers except those that come with you. Billy and me didn't expect no stagecoach coming through with them Apaches raising cane. We was just figuring on hitching up the buckboard and going into Tonto where it's safe. You mean there are no troops here? But my husband, Captain Mallory. I was told he was here. He was, dearie. Got orders night before last to join the soldiers at Apache Wells. Well, I guess we gotta turn back. See here, you're the station agent. This coach started for Lordsburg, and it's your duty to get us there. Oh, mercy, mister. I'm just an agent. Ask the driver. If the soldiers gotta go back, we all gotta go back. Um, uh, yes. I, I think, uh, that is, I feel, uh, we should all go back. I think we can get through all right, Curly. We'll settle this by vote. Folks, if we push on, we can be in Apache Wells by sundown. Soldiers there will give us an escort as far as the ferry, and then it's only a hoot and a holler into Lordsburg. Now, wait a minute. We got four men can handle guns. Five with you, Ringo. Doc Boone can shoot, if sober. That's foul slander, Curly. By when I was in training in 61 to put down the rebellion in the south... Later on, Doc, later on. Now, Mrs. Mallory, I don't aim to put no lady into danger without she votes for it. I've traveled all the way here from Virginia. I'm determined to get to my husband. I won't be separated any longer. And what's your vote, mister? Where's your manners, Curly? Ain't you going to ask this lady first? Huh? Oh, well, what do you say? What difference does it make? What does it matter? I demand that we go on. I stand on my legal rights. We'll count that as a vote. What do you say, Hatfield? To Lordsburg. If Mrs. Mallory can go, I can. In fact, it's my duty as a gentleman to protect her. You, Doc? I, sir, am not only a philosopher... I'm also a fatalist. Mm. Somewhere, sometime, there may be the right bullet or the wrong bottle waiting for Josiah Boone. Why worry where or when? Yes or no? Having this wisdom, sir, I have always courted danger. During the late war, when I had the honor, sir, to serve the Union under our great president, Abraham Lincoln... Do you want to go back? No! Mr. Peacock, you! But I, um... I would like to go, brother. I... 
I want to reach the bosom of my dear family. But I may never reach the bosom if we go on. Uh, uh, brother, I think it best we uh, should go back to the bosom. <laughs> I mean the soldiers. Me, Ringo, and Buck vote to go on, and that settles it. So you better all wash and have a bite to eat, folks. Then we'll hit the trail again. Good. Set right in, folks. It's hot and ready. And another delay. Boy, I could eat a coyote. Later on. Get out there and hitch up. Yeah, Dallas. You're going down where no folks are sitting. Take this chair right with Miss Mallory. Oh, but I... I... Well, thank you. I uh, think, Mrs. Mallory, you uh, you would find it cooler at the other end of the table, near the window. I'm sure I would. Thank you, Mr. Hatfield. I think I'd find it cooler there, too. Well, it, it looks like I got the plague, don't it? Oh, no. No, it's not you. It's... Well, I guess you can't break out of prison and into society the same week. I'm pretty dumb for sitting down with a lady like you. Thanks again for being kind to me, not moving away like they did. Oh, no, please. You don't understand. I... Will you have the bread, ma'am? Uh, Mrs. Mallory, are you ill? No, it's just that I'll be all right. You're very kind. Why? In the world I live in... One doesn't often see a lady, Mrs. Mallory. But they say you are a gambler. Yes, my dear. I guess I am. Have you ever been in Virginia, Mr. Hatfield? I had the honor of uh, being in your father's regiment. Oh? But I don't seem to recall the name of Hatfield. It's what I'm called now. Everybody up! Come on, folks! Next stop, Apache Wells! <laughs> to change horses. You yelled that the last time. Well, shucks, I know it. I gotta yell something, don't I? You want them to think we're stopping for Indians? Uh, get the folks to bite, Chris, while we change horses. We're pushing right through to Lordsburg. Aye, you come without the soldiers? Sure, we wasn't scared. Never seen an Apache, did we, Curly? Where's the cavalry, Chris? Yeah, where is the soldiers? Um, there is no soldiers. Hmm. The, the, the soldiers are gone. My husband. Where's Captain Mallory? Where is he? You, his wife, I think. Yes, where is he? Did he go with his men? Uh, si, senor. A uh, little, what you call it, uh, skirmish with the Apaches last night. The soldier take Captain Mallory to Lawsburg. I, I think he, he get hurt. Hurt? Bad. Mm, uh, yes. Mrs. Mallory, let me. Oh, Mrs. Mallory, she's fainting. Ah, carrier should be all right. Get some water, somebody. Take her in, Curly. Put her to bed. Huh? To bed? But well, we got to get hitched and on the trail for Lordsburg. Put that woman to bed. Here, Peacock, take this bottle of whiskey. Got it with your life until I'm finished. Here, I got the water, Curly. Take the water in the kitchen with Dallas. Boil it. Boil plenty of it. Boil it? But, Doc, it's about 200 in the shade right now. I said boil water. Plenty of water. Look here, you. Sot. What are you trying to do? I've got to get to Lordsburg. You'll get to Lloydsburg when that woman is fit to travel again. Again? Well, what's the matter with her? She's going to have a baby. Now, come on, help get me sober. Before continuing with the second part of Academy Award... I'd like to tell you about one member of the great family of Squibb products. I'd like to tell you why it is you get so much satisfaction out of every tube of Squibb Dental Cream. Why, when you use Squibb Dental Cream, you can taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. You see, Squibb Dental Cream is produced with extraordinary care. Its purity and effectiveness are guaranteed by more than a hundred separate tests. And the delightful minty flavor of Squibb Dental Cream is so mouth-refreshing. The active ingredient in pure Squibb Dental Cream is one of the safest, softest, yet most effective polishing agents known to dental science. 
For in dental cream, as in life-saving drugs, Squibb has only one goal, perfection. So remember, next time, to ask for Squibb Dental Cream. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. In just a moment, we will present the second part of Stagecoach. But first, we want to thank United Artists and Walter Wanger for making this story available. You'll be interested to know that Walter Wanger's next production is Night in Paradise, which can soon be seen in your local theater. And now, The House of Squibb presents part two of Academy Award, starring Claire Trevor as Dallas and Randolph Scott as the Ringo Kid in Stagecoach. What was that? Just an old coyote, Hatfield. That was no coyote. Listen. No, that wasn't no coyote. Why? It's a baby. And that's enough of card playing for me tonight. Looks like Doc brought it off all right. Good boy, Doc. Well? It's, it's a girl. A girl? Well, three cheers for old Doc Boone. Hip, hip! Shh, shh, shh. Huh? Quiet. Uh, uh, Mrs. Mallory must not be disturbed. How is Mrs. Mallory? Oh, she's going to be all right. Well, doggone. And I thought that little critter was a coyote howling. <laughs> Who's there? You oughtn't go too far, Miss Dollars. Apaches like to sneak up and pick off strays. Oh. I, uh, I watched you with that baby. You look, well, nice. Oh, uh, you were visiting in Lordsburg? No, I, I have friends there. Look, why don't you escape, Ringo? Why don't you escape? I aim to, Miss Dollars, in Lordsburg. Why, Lordsburg? Why don't you get over the border? My father and brother were shot down by the plumbers. I guess you don't know how it feels to lose your own folks that way. My people were killed by the Indians. I was just a kid. There was a massacre in the Superstition Mountains. Mm, that's tough on a girl. It's a hard country. You have to live, no matter what happens. Yeah, that's it. Look, Dallas, you've got no folks, neither have I. Maybe I'm crazy to ask you, but... Well, I still got a ranch across the border. It's a nice place. Trees, grass, a house half built. You see, I'm asking... Well, what I mean is... A man could live there. And a woman. Oh, I guess I'm crazy being so... So close to you like this. But you don't know me. You don't know who I am. What I am. I know all I want to know. You're the kind of a girl a man wants to marry. What you doing out here, kid? Oh, it's you, Dallas. You come along, kid. Stick close to the reservation. Time we bed it down, too. We gotta hit the trail come morning early. Geronimo or no Geronimo. <laughs> Good morning, Dallas. Oh, Doc. Fine morning. I uh, hear you stayed up all night with my patient. Thanks. Well, I slept some in the rock. Hey, hoey, everybody up. Get your breakfast, folks. The stagecoach is leaving on its last lap. Next stop, Lordsburg. Everybody up. It's about time. Good morning. Good morning. I laid awake most of the night, wondering what you'd have said if Curly hadn't busted in. You didn't answer what I asked you last night. Ringo, why don't you escape? There's a horse out there in the corral. Curly won't go after you. He can't leave the passengers in this fix. But I gotta go to Lordsburg. Won't you go to my ranch and wait for me? Wait for a dead man. You haven't got a chance and you know it. It was three against one when the plumbers swore you killed the foreman. 
It'll be three against one in Lordsburg. There's some things a man just can't run away from. But how can you talk about your life and, and my life when you're throwing them away? Well, what do you want me to do? Would it make us any happier if Luke Plummer was dead? One of his brothers would be after you with a gun. We'd never be safe. I don't want that kind of life, Ringo. I don't see what else I can do. Go now. Get away. Forget Lordsburg. Forget the plumbers. Make for the border and and I'll come. You you mean that? I do, I do. Won't you come along with me? Well, I I can't leave Mrs. Mallory and her baby. I'll I'll come to you from Lordsburg, I swear it. I ought to have my rifle. I got it for you last night. Now go on, Ringo. Saddle up and ride. Ride for the border. <laughs> Ringo! Get him up! Ringo! Ride! Ride! Don't stop now! Get off that horse! Turn off! Oh, why did you stop? You had a chance! Curly couldn't have caught you. I couldn't leave you now, Dallas. Give me your hands, kid. I'm putting the irons on you this time. You don't have to, Curly. I'm not running away. I'll say you ain't. Look at them hills. Smoke signals. Listen. War drums. Geronimo's Apaches. Right. Waiting. Come on! <laughs> Something mighty foolhardy, trying to run through these hills and them full of Indians. We don't know they are yet. Keep running. Hey, come on, oh, run, George you run. Hey, Curly, don't you think you ought to take the cuffs off Ringo? He's mighty handy with a gun. You drive them horses. I'll worry about the kid. Right, all right. Come on, boy. Hey, run. Curly, look. There they are! Indians! Shut up and drive them, boss! We gotta run for it now! Hold fast and play. I'm out of ammunition. So am I, Doc. I've got three rounds. Save them. Dallas. Haven't you got a smile for me? Oh, sure, Ringo, sure. Thanks. Ringo! Bump's head! Get out there on the lead horse! Right! So long, Dallas! Wait! Wait, don't you hear us? Yeah, what, ma'am? A bugle! Cavalry! Let me see. She's right! Soldiers from Lordsburg! Ringo! Oh, Ringo! Folks, Lordsburg, last stop. Hold it, Buck. You all right? Sure, sure, Curly. Just a scratch. Whoa, whoa, girl, whoa. Now, this is the end of the line. Watch it, boys. Mrs. Mallory's a sick woman. Get a stretcher. Huh? Take it easy. We've got a dead man in there, too. Where's Mrs. Mallory? She's all right. Well, tell her her husband, Captain Mallory's out of danger. You tell the captain he ain't. He's a papa. <laughs> Well, so long, Dallas. So long, boys. Well, Curly, we're in Lordsburg. Yeah, kid, this is it. Could you spare me an hour? Oh, uh, I don't know, kid. My world still goes, Curly. I'll be back in an hour. All right, kid, I'll trust you. Could I take my gun? Sure, why not? It ain't loaded. I borrowed three shells from Gatewood. Three? One for each of the plumber boys, eh? Yes, Buck, one for each of them. You're out on parole for an hour, Ringo. That's all I want to know about it. One hour. Wait, Dallas. Ain't you walking the wrong way? This way is the bad side of town, the dance halls and the... Dallas, wait. Let go. Let go of me. I told you not to follow me. But you can't go down there. That's where I'm going. I ask you to marry me. I'll never forget you asked me, Ringo. That's something. See them scars? Handcuffs. Scars wear off, Dallas. 
I ain't gonna give you a chance to forget me. No, please, Ringo. Let me go now. Senor, Senor Ringo, listen. Have a care, Senor. They are waiting around the turn in the road. Thanks, amigo. Thanks. I'll be ready. No, Ringo, no. Wait for me here, Dallas. Wait for me right here. I'll be back. Ringo, come back! Come back! Ringo! Curly, I got corns on my driving seat. Now we gotta sit on this buckboard. What for? Shut up, Buck. We're waiting for Ringo. That's gonna be some wait with them three plumber brothers a-laying for him. Three against one. Shut up! She's waiting, ain't she? Dallas? Well, heck, Curly, she's gotta wait. She's in love. Hey, look, them shadows. Three of them. I see them. The plumbers. Big shadows, Curly. Shut up. I'm looking for the other shadow. There it is. That's him, Curly. That tall shadow. Straight as an arrow. Dallas. What? He said to wait. Wait? Yeah. I'll be waiting. Forever now. What chance would he have? What? Ringo. Oh, Ringo. Hello, Dallas. I told you I'd be back for a little while. Ringo, you, you, your arm, it's soaked with blood. Get up here, Dallas, on this wagon. You've got to drive. You mean she can stay with me a while, Curly? Yeah, for a little while. Let her drive. You nurse that arm. Thanks. Got a good hold on them reins, Dallas? Yes, Curly. I've got him. All right, then. Yeah! 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 Get down! Get down! What's the idea of making them horses run away? Don't be so dumb, Buck. Them nags won't stop till that buckboard is over the border. But you let Ringo get away. Yeah, Buck. I guess I did it that. <laughs> now, wasn't that disgraceful careless? Why, Curly, you ain't such a bad hombre after all. Imagine you are now looking down into a room where figures, gowned and masked in spotless white, are working under the brilliant light of huge sterilizing lamps. At first glance, you might well believe yourself to be in the operating room of a modern hospital. But what you're actually seeing is one of the rooms at the Squibb Laboratories where products such as influenza virus vaccine or penicillin are packed. The most sterile conditions possible are always maintained there. Even the air is sterilized. No operating room anywhere is more scientifically safeguarded against contamination. It's just one example of the endless precautions taken by the House of Squibb to ensure the uniformity, purity, and efficacy of all the many Squibb products. Through such responsible service in the cause of human health, Squibb has earned its worldwide reputation as a name you can trust. Next week, another great picture. The House of Squibb will present Academy Award starring Ronald Coleman in If I Were King. Stagecoach was written for radio by Frank Wilson with an original musical score composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Our producer-director is D. Engelbach. Randolph Scott, whom you enjoyed as Ringo in today's performance, can now be seen in RKO's Batman's Territory. Claire Trevor, who played Dallas, will soon be seen in the RKO picture Crack Up. This is Hugh Brundage bidding you good night until next week at the same time when you are invited to listen again to Academy Award, presented by the House of Squibb, a name you can trust. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.